The deformation map is a, a very basic function in continuum mechanics, and it describes the motion or the deformation of bodies. So if I have a body B, what I can do is I can locate all the material points by relative to a fixed reference frame, let's say E1, E2, E3 with origin O, and so we'll locate the points with their position vectors relative to that uh, coordinate system, so we'll call that capital X. So each material point before the body is deformed has its own capital X label. Then if the body deforms and takes on a new shape, which we'll label BT, then every material point capital X will map over to a new location, which we'll call little x. So we'll have a new position vector that corresponds to the same material point. So if we have a material point, let's say P, which has coordinate capital X, then it ends up over here at little x. So little x really depends on big x, but I've, 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 I've put p here to emphasize the fact that it's the same material point that we're talking about. So the mapping that actually maps the points is called phi, and that's the deformation map. So phi is a function of the location of the material points, and let's say time, because the body can be changing its shape in time, and phi is a mapping. It, you feed it those two quantities, capital X and T, and it gives us the new location, little x, where the material point that was originally at capital X now sits. We can also write this out initially, so it says little xi is equal to phi i, which depends on, and I've expanded all the way out, capital X1, capital X2, capital X3, and time. And, and phi itself is known as the deformation map. Got some writing on top of each other there. So, um, the map. So another way of saying what the deformation map does is it maps material points initially at locational capital X in the reference configuration of the body to little x at the time t. So the the reference configuration is what you start with, and the configuration of the body after deformation is known as a spatial or deformed configuration. So let's go ahead and look at a couple of concrete examples of deformation maps that's good to have a few in mind. So let's look at one that's known as simple shear. In simple shear, you think of a block of material that you slide over like a deck of cards. And so it kind of leans over. And the, the defining feature of this is that the amount that material points move over in the horizontal direction depends on how far above the one axis they are. So written out, we say little x1 is equal to big x1 plus some proportionality constant here, let's say gamma, which depends on the height you are above the axis, so capital X2. And points don't move in the vertical direction, so little x2 is equal to big x2. So this is the uh, simple shear deformation map written out fully in coordinates. Another uh, basic... Deformation is known as elongation, sometimes called simple elongation. And so you have a bar of material of length L, say, oriented in the one direction. And after deformation, it ex just extends out, and its new length is some parameter, let's say alpha, times the original length L. So in this case, written out in components, the deformation map is quite simple. Little x1, the location of a point, is equal to that proportionality constant alpha times x1. And points don't move in the two direction in simple elongation, so little x2 is equal to capital X2. So again, a coordinate representation here. A third basic motion that's nice to have in one's repertoire of motions to test various things that we'll develop later on is rigid motion. So in rigid motion, you start with a body uh, in the one, two plane. Every, everything I'm doing here are deformation maps and two coordinates simply because it's easier to draw them. Uh, and there's a reference point uh, x naught that you also need. And in rigid motion, the body can translate and then it can rotate. And when we say rotate, it rotates about the point x naught. And the way 
this is described after you, you slide the body over and rotate it, it will say that the, uh, the new location of points is equal to phi, depending on where they were originally, and time. And so there is a translation vector, C, which just tells you how much the body slides in the one and two directions in 2D or one, two, and three directions in 3D. And then it has a tensor Q, which is only a function of time. Q is orthogonal, so Q transpose Q is equal to the identity. And it's Q times X minus an X naught. So that what this effectively does is rotates the body about the point X naught. Written out additionally, you have Xi is equal to Ci plus Qij, so second order tensor, times Xj minus X naught J. So this is, this is uh, the deformation map for rigid rotation or rigid function. So it has a translation part and a rotation part. Uh, the last deformation I want to mention is uh, bending deformation. So in bending deformation, you have a thin body being oriented, this case, in the one direction. And again, we'll do this as a two-dimensional case. And in bending deformation, what we have is a characterization of the deformation that depends just on two functions. So the two functions are v, it's only a function of x1, and that's the deflection of the neutral axis, and theta, which is the rotation of cross sections of the beam. So it's a very restricted set of characterizing functions. There are only two of them, and they only depend on x1. And out of this, we can construct the full deformation map for the body. And the, the motion in the horizontal direction, if we want to know where the location material points are, they will be located at capital X1. And then there's a motion due to the rotation of the cross section. So depending on how far above the neutral axis a point is, it's going to move that mount, X2, times the sine of the angle of the rotation. So this is the expression for the horizontal motion of material points. And for the vertical motion of material points, what we'll have is little x2 is going to equal capital X2 plus the deflection. So that's the deflection neutral axis. But then also because of the rotation, the material points will actually change their uh, elevation. And so and that change will be the distance that they're originally above the neutral axis, so capital X2 times one minus the cosine of the rotation of the cross section. So this is a, a significantly more complex deformation than the simple shear elongation or rigid motion, but it's one that's familiar to a lot of people. And this deformation here, as I've described it, is sometimes known as uh, the Timoshenko kinematics. If you want Bernoulli-Euler kinematics, what you add in is an extra assumption, which is that the, uh, that the slope of the neutral axis, so the derivative of v with respect to x1, is equal to the tangent of, of theta, so, the, so that the rotation and the slope are, are tied together. So that would give you Bernoulli-Euler uh, beam bending theory. But uh, as it stands, uh, as I've written it, it's a Timoshenko beam that you get out of this type of deformation.